Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Restaurateurs know this, their top three largest expenses, payroll, food and beverage, and commercial rent. Today we're talking about commercial rent and I have three speakers with me today and they're all have years of experience in the commercial leasing environment here in Hawaii. So first, ladies first, I'd like to please have Stephanie introduce herself. Hi, I am Stephanie England, a general manager of Kamakana LEE. Um, I came to Hawaii in 2006 and have been here since. Um, my work initially in real estate started with um, tenant coordination and construction related elements. And in 2016, I was offered a position with JLL to uh, bring out of the ground and open Kamakana Ali'i, which was um, my construction experience certainly helped um, facilitate that project and um, allowed me uh, a lot of information and back knowledge to be able to help with that process. Um, but I uh, currently, as I said, am managing Kamakana Ali'i. And prior to that, I managed eight other properties from, you know, Aina Haina Shopping Center, like Strip Center, Kahala Mall, office buildings, and the like. So certainly real estate has been my forte for many years now. Very nice. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank and you. Devin, Devin, please introduce yourself. Hey, I'm uh, Devin Higa. I'm Vice President uh, for National Retail Leasing with JLL here in Hawaii. Uh, been in commercial real estate for about 15 years now, originally with uh, general growth properties and uh, work primarily on uh, landlord representation for our shopping center leasing here in the state. Um, some of the major projects I work on are Kamakana Lee uh, out in Kapolei, Windward Mall in Kaneohe and Kukui Grove uh, over on Kauai. Nice to meet you, Devin. And I have also Biff. Hi, Biff. Could you Hi. please tell uh, I'm Biff Graper. I'm uh, a retail restaurant salesperson with Colliers International and a restaurant consultant. I have over 30 years of senior uh, restaurant experience in, in uh, managing and profitability of restaurants. And I have over 20 years experience uh, doing restaurant transactions in real estate. Thank you, Biff. You know, today we're going to be discussing commercial lease leases and the future of commercial lease agreements. I just have a few questions um, that were sent in from our viewers. Number one, what are some of the ways COVID-19 has affected the restaurant real estate? Biff, you want to take that one first? Uh, sure. There, there are lots of <laughs> things that have happened. Uh, <laughs> You know, as as reported in the media, restaurant mortality has gone through the roof. Uh, there, there were uh, people who were unable to adopt to outdoor dining, uh, meal delivery services, and curbside pickup and things like that. Uh, they failed, and businesses that were marginal prior to COVID nineteen, uh, they failed. And, and so there, there's been a high degree of restaurant mortality. And uh, the government forced shutdowns and operational restrictions uh, had led landlords and tenants both to examine what they're doing and, and build into future leases the unforeseeable circumstances that a pandemic can create. So both landlords and tenants are getting more creative in the force majeure end of their leases and coming up with ways to improve that. They're negotiating uh, protections in their leases uh, when they're unable to fulfill their obligations. And it could happen on both sides, landlord and tenant. Construction issues, getting permits, uh, building permits have become a big issue, uh, particularly since COVID and uh, easily 
take eight to 12 months to get a building approved. And uh, construction materials, there's been uh, a lot of delays getting construction materials and uh, that affecting the real estate. And uh, it's getting hard to obtain things. And there have been, uh, you know, supply chain disruptions and furniture fixtures and equipment are taking longer to get here. And uh, sometimes they're totally unavailable. And uh, restaurateurs have to get very creative in uh, having all the furniture, fixtures, and equipment at the store to get open on time. And uh, there have been changes in the infrastructure of the premises. Uh, high air filtration has become important. And uh, people have gone to a lot of touch, touch lists doors, automatic doors, and automatic soap dispensers and things like that. So there have been changes in the infrastructure for restaurants also. It's pretty much what I think of. Well, everything that you've touched on, Bib, I have seen in our restaurant that have been incorporating everything to create a safe environment for our patrons and our employees. Stephanie, do you have anything to add in some of the ways that COVID-19 has affected the restaurant um, industry in real estate? You know, I think the only thing I would add, you know, to kind of carry on what Biff was saying is that, you know, we had some tenants that did an incredible job. I'm, I'm very proud at Komakana Lee that um, we didn't lose tenants as a result of COVID-19. Um, we had incredible partnerships with landlord and tenant that were able to come together and figure out solutions to the, the lease structures that were in place and deferment of rent and all of those various elements. Um, as a shopping center, we had an obligation to do our best to reduce expenses anywhere and everywhere we could with the common area expenses and things like that. And so we were able to accomplish many of those um, strategies, tactics, and things to be able to help reduce some of those expenses to help our tenants sustain themselves through COVID. And I, I think the, the stories that we have to share are those tenants who truly pivoted, who truly took on that responsibility and um, you know, became an example of how to take a sit-in, dining-in experience and pivot that to become a takeout only business for an extended period of time. Um, as a shopping center, we implemented various uh, programs throughout the center to um, facilitate the, the curbside takeout and things like that. Our marketing campaigns were incredibly integral in that process as well. Uh, we did various campaigns that were, um, that, that, that that encouraged our customer to come to the center, take out and, and go home to, to dine at, at home. So, which was, you know, in our community, that was critical. That was a very uh, common pattern for our customer base, uh, you know, originally, and people were craving their favorites. <laughs> you know, they wanted kick and Cajun. They wanted, you know, those, those um, delicious foods, Cheesecake Factory, CPK. Um, and so I think it, it's important to note that it can be done, it has been done, and we at Kamakana Ali'i did it very well. Yes, you did. When I took the tour there with you, Stephanie, mm -hmm. I noticed that your food hall area is all open air. It's right there in the breezeway with a lot of picnic tables out and families enjoying all of the different um, restaurant offerings. So excellent, excellent. Devin, do you have anything that you want to add how COVID-19 um, affected some of our restaurants that you saw a restaurant tours doing? I, I think uh, Biff and Stephanie hit on most of them. I, I would say the only other thing that I, I think has been a significant uh, impact from COVID is, is the labor um, uh, or the impact to labor and the availability of that. There's, like Stephanie said, a lot of pent up demand uh, in terms of people wanting to go out and eat and uh, um, do more activities with families and friends and get together. And, and I think uh, just restaurants, uh, in, in terms of the ones that we've uh, been talking to, our existing ones and ones that are looking to, to expand and, and take advantage of some of the opportunities out there have been kind of constricted by that 
um, labor um, and, and being able to staff um, all of their restaurants from open to close. Um, so still see some uh, impacts of that in terms of limited hours of operations for some of the smaller moms and pops and even some of the nationals just getting the, the coverage and the customer service levels up. Um, that you would you would typically see or expect from them. So I, I think that uh, in addition to some of the other challenges that they've mentioned with the supply chain and the uh, uh, construction continues to still be an issue um, with restaurants. Yes, you're, you're absolutely correct. Another question that came in, Biff, is how is the current inflation affecting the restaurant's real estate environment? Uh, well, one of the ways, uh, in, in the past, most landlords uh, wanted annual rent increases. This is normal. And most landlords had a percentage that they wanted it to increase, something like 3% or 3.5% per year. And with this inflation, some landlords are taking a new approach now, and they not only want a percentage, they also want it either to be a percentage increase or the increase in the CPI, the consumer price index. Because if the consumer price index goes up 8% and they're only getting a 3% increase, they're losing ground. And, uh, and, and their income to cost of living has gone down. So I, I'm seeing that on the landlord side uh, coming into play. Uh, I'm sure there are other things, but that's what comes to mind for me. Interesting, Beth. Interesting. Devin, do you have anything to add in of how the current inflation is affecting um, restaurants, real estate landscape? No, I think uh, uh, Biff kind of hit it on the head. The uh, I think the important thing, and, and even on, on our side, where I handle mostly landlord work, is making sure that the our clients are aware and educated just because uh, a restaurant may be doing more sales than they they were uh, potentially doing b before COVID in 2019. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're more profitable. A lot of the restaurants have had to increase their prices to offset uh, the inflation, um, the supply chain issues, and 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 to offset all of those costs to increasing uh, labor as well. So um, they may actually be doing um, the same amount of transactions um, and, and offsetting all of that inflation with with the higher costs. So just taking a look and making sure you're understanding how the restaurants are actually performing. I think it's important on both, you know, uh, tenants tenant side and, and the landlord side um, to acknowledge that. Very, very good. Thank you, Devin. Now, another, um, I, when I was at Kamakana Lee, I got to take the tour and we did go out and we did see a location. And I think this is where most of the restaurant tours are now looking for something that's more, has a, also an outdoor environment, especially after this pandemic. So what are some of the considerations that restaurant tours are now doing when it, they are selecting a new restaurant site? Stephanie, you wanna take that one? Um, sure. You know, I think one of our strengths through the pandemic was the fact that we were an outdoor shopping center and we had over eight restaurant locations that had outdoor dining options. And our customers certainly took advantage of that. So I do think that that is a, a nice addition that, that we do offer. And um, we currently have a space that's currently available, the first generation space that has a lanai you know, built into that that format. And I think our ownership and developer did a really good job of understanding that that is part of the culture in Hawaii and um, fortuitous in some ways that, you know, as we went through COVID, that we were able to, to truly take advantage of that. Um, and so I do think restaurateurs are looking for elements like that, especially, you know, as we we look back and see COVID and the impacts of that, and um, a customer truly felt safer dining outside, in, you know, rather than inside during that time frame. Yes, and I got to see that space. It's a first generation space that's vacant, and it has a beautiful lanai, and just the breeze coming through is just gorgeous. So, mm -hmm. the question is for Biff. There are some. Is there some considerations that restaurant tours now are thinking about? before selecting their next restaurant location? Well, I, I think the, <clears throat> the basics uh, still matter. And, and you know, the, the first thing I advise or uh, consulting with somebody 
is the, the population <clears throat> that they're going to draw from. And, and so they need to look at the vehicular traffic. If it's relevant to their location, they need to look at pedestrian traffic that's relevant. Uh, they need to look at other generators of customers like Kamakana Alihi has a huge customer base, which they would be drawing from that come to the center. Uh, the other thing is that we had a situation with one of our restaurants. Uh, a customer came in and he said, you know, I live on the North Shore and this, this restaurant was in town. And he said, you know, I, I come here once a month for the Cheesy Gal Deluxe Hamburger. It's so good. And, you know, we got all puffed up. We thought, gee, you know, we're really good. And then it dawned on us that we ought to find out where our customers do come from. And so we did something called a dot survey. And the way we did that is we asked the customer if we could ask them a couple of questions and there was a free dessert for you in it. And the uh, question was, before you came here, can you give us the intersection that's closest to where you were? And when you leave here, can you give us the intersection that's the closest to where you're going? And, and so then we wrote that down and we did that with our customers and we did it with 28 restaurants and some were dinner houses and some were fast food. And we discovered that over 85% of the customers come within four and a half minutes and it shocked us. And, and so suddenly realizing the vehicular traffic, the pedestrian traffic, how much traffic is in the mall, office buildings, churches that are in that zone becomes critical. And so one of the most important things that they need to look at is the population basis. And then depending on the circumstances, parking becomes real important. Oh, by the way, that guy who loved his cheesy gal deluxe hamburger, his grandmother lived two blocks from us. So that's why he came every month. <laughs> and uh, the parking situation is very critical. Uh, surveys have shown that restaurant parking, surveys of two, two and a half people per stall is what happens with restaurant parking. So if you have 100 seats, you do the math, and, and if you require parking because there's yeah. pedestrian traffic, you do the math, and, and that's the number of parking stalls you need. And uh, so, parking could be very important. And if it's insufficient, you know, are there other ways to be very important? And uh, accessibility uh, is the restaurant accessible? Get off the freeway and you're there. Get off the main road and you're there. Freeway visible. Uh, visibility counts a lot. And then the other factor is competition. Doing what you're going to do, are there other people in that zone that are doing the same thing? Yes, you're just going to be sharing the pie with them. So you want to have your individual identity in that location. But I Despite COVID and everything, I recommend people okay. stick with the basics. Despite COVID and everything. And people like uh, the shopping center, Kamakana, Alihi, can provide uh, a prospect with uh, the number of people that visit the center, a prospect with the number of parking places and things like that. So you can get a clear picture of your potential at that location. Because the most important thing is, how much sales will you do at this location? Once you have a grip on that, you can look at the rent and go, gee, this is expensive, or gee, this is really cheap. And because it's a factor of what are your sales going to be? So that's what I tell What are your sales? Good advice, Biff. Very, very solid, good advice. So, Devin, so what are some of the considerations you're seeing? restaurateurs are now thinking about due to what we've experienced the last two and a half years with this pandemic. And please share with us that spot that I walked through over there at Kamakana Lee that's really prime location for any restaurateur. Sure, I think uh, 
kind of building off what Biff said about the parking, I think one of the big uh, asks that we're seeing more and more now has to do with uh, accessi accessibility to uh, uh, pick up or kind of uh, short term parking. Um, so a lot of times the larger shopping centers may not be able to accommodate that for a reserve for specific tenants, but um, uh, having access to some short, some sort of 10 to 15 minute uh, type of parking where, where customers are able to pull up and kind of run in and out to uh, uh, get uh, uh, takeout, I think is a huge uh, um, uh, kind of portion of in generating in additional uh, business, get, uh, um, like Biff mentioned, um, and looking at their overall sales. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the bigger trends that we see coming out of pandemic is um, most, if not all, of the restaurants asking for for those kind of uh, parking accommodations. Um, and in terms of the uh, uh, availability that we have, we do have one uh, restaurant location, like you mentioned, at Kamakanawi, which is uh, conveniently located in the uh, Grove, which is our power center that's anchored by 24-hour uh, fitness um, foodland farms, um, also open center. during the pandemic by, uh, um, fitness. as the anchor on the other side of the center. Um, the uh, restaurant space is about 3,500 square feet um, with about a thousand square foot patio yeah, that's attached to it patio that's attached. and has direct access to our uh, parking field, uh, our main parking field uh, for the shopping center. So great opportunity for anyone looking for restaurant space on the west side. Very nice. Now, we've only got a few minutes left, so please, I'm going to give each of you an opportunity to a little bit about how they can get in touch with you, some of the maybe the locations that you have maybe perfect for a restaurant, and any closing remarks. So do you want to go first, Stephanie? Sure. Um, you know, I think I, just in closing, I, I did want to, to mention that that labor concern. That's one thing we hear consistently with from our tenants. I also wanted to share that the Hawaii Restaurant Card program was incredibly helpful to our restaurateurs at the center. And I want to thank you for that partnership and for working that out because I know you guys were at the forefront of that and that was definitely helpful. And um, just in, the other only thing I would I would share is is why Kamakana Ali'i aside from all the wonderful things that Beth mentioned that we offer um, that I would also just share that you know we have an incredible management team we have an embedded marketing team that is here to support our tenants to work through various challenges that they have. Um, and and we're here to assist and, and help them strategize. We've been here, you know, almost six years now in this community. We know what the community wants, what the community needs. And I think we are the best partner to um, in our ownership and just our management team to be able to create a successful opportunity for any restaurant tour at Kamakana Ali'i. Thank you, Stephanie. Any closing remarks, Devin, before we close the show? I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be on here. And, and I guess the only other thing I would add is that um, there's a lot of great uh, landlords out here that um, have the privilege of working with that, that do recognize uh, the importance of having a good balance of uh, both local and national restaurants um, in all of their centers and, and recognize what a big draw and almost becoming the new anchors of our shopping centers that restaurants are, especially coming out of uh, of COVID. So there, there's definitely a lot of uh, opportunities out there um, for people looking to expand their restaurants. And again, a lot of uh, uh, landlords out there that do value the partnership with, with all of the uh, local restaurants and the variety that they're able to provide. Thank you, Devin and Bill. First, thank you for having me. It's, it's been uh, delightful. And uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of me, uh, just call Colliers International and ask for Biff. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, talk with you about your situation and, and learn about what you want to do. And uh, with you about your situation. Other than that, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. And Stephanie, you are correct. I was going to say that as my last time. Line um, Hawaii restaurant card, the current one that was purchased 
by businesses is expiring on the 30th, which is this Thursday at 2 p.m. So please, yeah. restaurant tours, it is a pure bit card. I want to let restaurant tours know that everyone that is a restaurant, a uh, food service, such as a bakery, a coffee shop, even a bar, can accept this current version of the restaurant card. $750,000 was purchased on this restaurant card. So we still have a considerable amount still out there. The difference with this is this card is, is purchased by corporations and businesses. So you can also put your favorite spirits on it. So please everyone use that restaurant card. And again, this is Cheryl Matsuoka, the executive director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And the Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. Thank you so much. We'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.